Hey guys, welcome to Bowhunting Soul. Well, uh, today I want to start a, a quick little series on some knots that uh, are really, really useful, so things that you should know if you're a saddle hunter. Now, I was a brand new saddle hunter last year, and it was kind of overwhelming when you first jump into it. You've got all these knots, and you've got all these terminologies and things like that. Well, I'm not going to really get into the saddle terminology too much, because there's a bunch of other videos on that, but I do want to talk about some knots that, uh, that you probably ought to know if you're going to be doing any kind of saddle hunting. Like I said, I was new last year. I jumped into it. Now, before I begin any of this stuff, uh, I do want to tell you that I'm not a knot expert. Uh, these are the knots that I use, and I'm just going to use it for demonstration purposes. You absolutely have to go and practice this stuff, and this is a legal disclaimer here. You got to go practice this stuff, and then you, you know, if you have any questions about it, go to a professional, uh, like arborist, or uh, you know, someone that does climbing, like or an REI or something like that, and get professional instruction. Make sure that your the ropes and everything like that are absolutely um, uh, top notch. That your technique is top notch. That, that you're not doing anything wrong. So anyway, so the first knot we're going to talk about today is this guy right here, which is called the figure eight on a bite. Now anytime we hear something that says on a bite in terms of ropes, that just means you're doing everything with the rope you know, doubled over. So whatever you do, you're going to do everything with the rope doubled over. That's what on a bite means. So um, this is a figure eight on a bite. This is what would be used to go around the tree. Okay, let's just say this was your tag end and you got the tree. This would go around the tree and cinch like that. Show you better here. This would be the tree in here, and then this would come down to your tether and connect to your bridge via a carabiner or, or whatever you're using. So we're going to go to the tabletop. I'm going to do a, uh, a video showing a lot closer on how to tie this thing. Okay, so follow me there. All right, guys, so this is going to be the figure eight on a bite. We're on a white surface here. This is my kitchen counter, actually, and I'm actually using... Um, uh, six millimeter cordelette. Now, this is not something that you're going to want to use as a tether. This is not rated um, for for that. Actually, you can use it as a prusik, but I would not hang it off it as um, as my main line. But for the for the purposes of demonstration, we have a section here. Okay, sorry about the shadows. So we're going to start off. We're going to go under. over and back through the hole. Okay, I'm going to do that again. I'm going to start off with an even length just for our purposes here. We're going to make a loop so this will be on the, this is called the bite, on a bite meaning it's looped over. So we're going to go under over and back under through the main the main loop that you made and then we tighten that down now when we go through we call what we call we dress the knot meaning all of these pairs they don't they don't cross one another like you wouldn't want to have like like that for example okay so anytime you have these pairs that go through you want them nice and neat so these two are parallel 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 there you go. There's your figure eight on a bike. Okay, so I hope that helps. Again, this is going to be uh, useful for going around your tether. Oh, sorry, this will be like your tether, like going around a tree. Pretend the tree is right in here. You would do this. And then along this section, you would have uh, like a rope man one or a, um, a prusik, uh, what have you, coming down to your tether or, or down to your bridge rather on your saddle. So anyway, hope that helps. That's the first knot, one of the most important ones I think you should learn. Figure eight on a bike. 